welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church in Hammond, Wisconsin. We are happy to have you join us today, no matter where you are watching for, from in the world. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, this December 13th, 2020. And it is a, our tree is looking better, so thank you to those that have dropped off an ornament from your family. I just do want to clarify that I did not put this green and, and gold stocking at the top of the tree, um, but somebody obviously felt that was important. You probably know who you are. But um, we continue um, in our Advent devotions. Keep reading through those, working through those. We can still take your uh, coloring pages if you have them, um, or you can still drop off an ornament if you like, like for our community Christmas tree. If you haven't had a chance yet to watch the midweek Advent services, you can actually go back and watch them. Um, or we have one more coming up this week that'll be sent out to you via email link uh, about noon on Wednesday. Or you can find the link on our Facebook page, or you can go to our web page too and get the link that way. Thanks for joining us in worship today. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved the neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today we light the candle of joy, carrying joy in our hearts and minds even in the darkest times. We stand in awe as the shepherds did and hear a voice ringing out, Do not be afraid. Does the middle one mean Christmas? The middle one means Christmas. You want to light the first one, Mason? Can you do the pink one? Come. 
Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. We praise you, O God, for this wreath that marks our day of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Amen. We light the Advent candles against the winter night to welcome our Lord Jesus who is the world's true light to welcome our Lord Jesus who is the world's true light three candles now are gleaming and show us the true way rejoice the baptist cries out your lord has come today rejoice the baptist cries out the lord has come today we pray the prayer of the day stir up the wills of your faithful people lord god and open our ears to the words of your prophets that anointed by your spirit we may testify to your light through jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen a reading from isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them garland instead of ashes, the oil of glands and instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up to the former devastations. They shall repair the ru ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge, acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exclude in my God, for he has his clo clothed me in with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridge, as a bridegroom, decks himself with a garland, and as his bride adorns, adores himself, herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, as a, and as a garden causes what is sown, in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to the spring up before all the nation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel from John chapter 1. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to him. Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, 
I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love seeing Christmas trees tied on top of cars. I'm not sure exactly why. To me, there's just something kind of charming about it. It's one of those first signs of Christmas. It seems like all of a sudden you'll see a Christmas tree on top of a car and it's like, that's right, it's time to get the tree. Now, it's been at least a couple weeks now, but I saw one that really impressed me and made me laugh out loud. I was in Hudson and the tree on top of the car was covered in white tree lights. Obviously, they weren't just planning on driving their tree home, but it was a part of their Christmas decorations, a lit tree on top of their car. It was a very unique way to bring joy into this world, and it certainly brought a huge smile to my face. Well, I have no idea who is driving the car or if they are people that celebrate the birth of Jesus or not, but it was a great reminder to me that Jesus came into this world to put a light in it, to be the light in it. A couple weeks ago, a friend of mine posted this question on her Facebook page. If you could speak passionately on a topic for 20 minutes, what would you talk about? Oh, without preparing, I might add. So what pops into your head? What would you talk about for 20 minutes without preparing for it? Now the answers on her page were quite diverse. You know, a couple people said things about children and child development. Somebody said Medicare. Another person said end of life care. Someone said mindfulness. Another said health and wellness. And one person said they would talk about their relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, if I'm totally honest, I probably wouldn't jump to that first either. My first thoughts probably would be something like, outdoor ministry and the importance of sending kids to camp, the TV show Friends, how to survive being an old parent, which I'm still working on. Now we as Lutherans typically aren't real great at testifying to the light. Now I've recruited a lot of adults in my lifetime to help with children or youth ministry. And I would say the most common excuse to not do it is they'll say something like, well, I don't know enough about the Bible or sharing my faith or I don't know, whatever else. Now, I just want to warn you, Trinity friends, that I do not accept that as an excuse. Now, I most often learn about the Bible and scripture and my faith when I am preparing to teach it to somebody else, whether it's in a sermon or in a Bible lesson, but I digress. Now, you know what, though? You don't have to be anything other than who you are to testify to the light, to share that message of Jesus Christ. You'll notice that John acknowledged that he was not the Messiah, Elijah, or the prophet. He just was who he was, a camel hair wearing, locust and honey eating guy who was passionate about preparing the way for the coming of Jesus. John's testimony to the light is timeless. It is still just as appropriate for us today and needed today as it was then. During this time of Advent, even if we feel it is in our strength, this is our calling to live our lives, to drive our conversations, to witness to the light of Jesus within us. God sent this light, Jesus, into our lives to bring sparks and fires of joy and light and hope. And we have a great opportunity to bring light to this darkness. Have you ever actually been in complete darkness, like total darkness? Now, I'm normally not afraid of the dark, 
But I remember one time going to Crystal Cave in Spring Valley. And once you're down in the cave, they shut off the lights. And it is like complete darkness. And it's actually kind of terrifying. There's no residual light from anywhere. There's no shadows. There's nothing. You can't see what's coming. You can't see what might be touching you or what that noise is. And it actually reminds me, though, that we are literally, or rarely, literally, in the dark. Even if you're camping out in the wilderness, unless it's a completely cloudy night, you will have the light of moon or stars, and most likely, you will have a light source very near to you. The kind of darkness that people are living in right now is not a literal darkness. You're probably thinking, well, duh, of course we know that. But I'm not sure we realize how debilitating it can be to live in any kind of emotional or spiritual darkness. It's like being in that cave. It feels scary and hopeless, and it creates a longing for light. Here's the thing. We all actually have a light source very near to us. So near to us, in fact, that it is inside of us and it surrounds us. It is the light of Jesus. And there are lots of people needing to know that Jesus is here for them. So how is the best way to do that? Give your own testimony of how Jesus has been a light for you. Now I can tell someone over and over again that Jesus loves you, Jesus is here for you, and it is completely true. But if you are the one on the receiving end of that message, it might not be enough. A testimony of someone else's experience might be just what is needed to go along with that message. You know, it's pretty common to look to others to give testimony or information of restaurants or experiences, you know, places to travel, etc. We put value in other people's thoughts and experiences. They help shape the actions we will take ourselves. The same can be true for sharing our own stories of the importance of Jesus in our life. Sometimes it can be more subtle, and we don't actually have to name Jesus. But other times, Jesus should be named. And this can be uncomfortable. But you know what? A lot of things are uncomfortable, and we still have to do them, right? So I have two tasks for you as we are continuing kind of mid-Advent now. First one is look for the light. Look, listen, notice where you see light that you don't normally. It comes as a surprise, it's unexpected. I was listening to a radio program on COVID and the Minnesota Department of Health Commissioner said something that caught my ear. She said, you know, a light in all this has been that scientists all over the world are collaborating together to work on finding out more about this virus and how to combat it. You know, it's funny that as much as we are encouraged to be apart right now, I think I've seen more people and places actually coming together. Churches working together, just as we are doing with two other churches for Advent services. Parents coming together to keep circles small, to keep their um, kids together for education or childcare. Organizations working together to be more effective rather than just trying to do everything themselves. It takes work. But it's definitely a light. And for me, Jesus is shining through and in all these things. Look for the light. So the second task I have for you is to work on your own personal story of light. Practice telling it to someone who already knows it or someone you feel really comfortable with. Then figure out a way to tell it to someone who needs to hear it. You don't have to be anything other than who you already are. You don't have to be an expert in the Bible. You don't have to quote scripture. You don't have to use fancy words in prayer. You don't have to have some really deep revelation. I mean, it's great if you do, but you don't have to. Just be who you are. If people listen to a camel hair wearing, locust eating guy, surely people will listen to you. Be the light. 
I would bet that one of the first songs you ever learned in church as a child or in Sunday school was this little light of mine. You know, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When we let it shine, we testify to the one who put it in our lives. Be witness to that light. The light that has always been there is here now and will always continue to come. Amen. Together we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. 
Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to worship. Embed your word in their hearts. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythm of nature to make their living. God of peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Disaster Response and all disaster relief organizations in their comfort recovery efforts. God of the powerful and helpless, you close us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. God of sinner and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our offering is an important act of our worship, a response to God's steadfast and faithful love for us. We thank you for your offerings to continue to help with the ministry and mission of Trinity Lutheran Church. Let us pray our offering prayer. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. 
Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the lay of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Thanks be to God. God.